A year passes and the Briefs family is invited to the son's house for a small celebration. Several of their other friends were also invited and more familiar faces are seen. Bula is intrigued and excited to finally see Sun Shishi, her secret rival in action, and in her own environment. Their house. She has met Shishi before, and although she wasn't proud enough to say that the woman wasn't the least bit attractive she had to wonder what Goku saw in a woman who was constantly picky. God, she was such a loud nagger that even Bula felt her ears hurting just from her loud, screechy voice. Bula remembered an incident where she had chased Goku around their house, and Bulma, Trunks, and Gotten had laughed at them but Bula and her father had rolled their eyes in disdain at the display. Vegeta had scoffed, because he considered Goku's clownish acts to be the height of idiocy, but Bula had scoffed, because she was never more disgusted at the way she she treated her husband. Sure, the older woman did have a sort of grace, when she wasn't a loud shrieking banshee, and beauty, she wasn't exactly drop-dead gorgeous like Bulma, her mom was, but she was pretty enough, but Bula couldn't see any other attractive qualities. Did Goku enjoy having someone yell at him all day long? Hmm. Perhaps she ought to learn to be a nagger too? Shishi was also older, and she looked at to the fine lines etched across her face like most women in their 60s had. But Goku looked like he was still in his early 30s. But that was all thanks to his genetics of being a Saiyan. Bula knew quite clearly how old he was too. And she now understood how many people would disapprove of their large age gap should a relationship between them occur. But she couldn't help her feelings. Love is love, right? There's no stopping your feelings. It was a fine day. Bright and sunny, the sky above looked so blue and a light breeze was blowing ever so gently. Their family had taken one of the jets to fly them all over here, and they were all wearing their best clothes. Bulla's eyes drank in the sight that Mount Peozu had to offer. The mountainside was filled to the brim with lush green trees that made a beautiful forest, the air a cool crisp freshness that she had never felt before back in the city, and the sounds of the trees rustling were quite intriguing. Come, come, sit down and eat. Don't be shy guys, we're all family here, she she called out to them, waving them to the many tables that had been set up outside of their little house. Bula and the rest made their way to the table, and as she approached it, the delightful sense of delicious food floated up to her nostrils and immediately engulfed her with its mouth-watering smell. Goodness, what was that? She nearly did a double take at the scent but she stood firm and strode to her seat, determined not to be defeated by a mere smell. Her baby blues drank the sight of the incredibly outrageously laden table with a feast fit to serve fifty kings. She she had cooked them a meal worthy for all of the gods of destruction and their angels combined. Bula nearly sighed and drooled at the exceedingly succulent-looking food that had been prepared. On one of the table, she spied a large roasted wild boar with stuffings inside. Then there was an enormous bowl of Chinese fried rice, at least six whole roasted chicken, a side of mashed potatoes, a huge container, spaghetti and meatballs, beef Szechuan, breaded pork cutlets, steamed sea bass, and many more. The list seemed endless and just as one bowl of fried rice disappeared another huge bowl made its way to the table. Bula watched with a sinking feeling as the object of her love stuffed his face, with such enthusiasm. The only time she had witnessed that much vigor from Goku was, when he was training. More please he barked, his hand already extended, an empty bowl in it. She she filled it up expertly, and Bula watched with a deep sadness as Goku wolfed it all down once again. The man was eating so happily and with such love that the girl of twelve couldn't help but feel defeated. Her blue gaze fell upon her rival, and she felt even more insecure as she watched the older woman smile proudly at her husband, who was practically inhaling her food like a vacuum. Don't you want that, Bula? Trunks asked, as he eyed her plate hungrily. Bah, no. You go ahead and have that, Bula said but upon hearing Goku sing Chichi's praises, her hand stilled on her plate. On second thought, I think I will eat it, she muttered grabbing a piece of the wild boar meat and popping it into her mouth. There had been a burst of flavors, and it was all Bula could do not to moan in bliss at the extremely well-seasoned meat. The texture, the flavor, the seasoning, the sauce, and the stuffing, oh, dear lord the stuffing. Bula wanted to explode in tears of joy and devastation all at once. There was no doubt about it. She she was an amazing cook. Spectacular even. No wonder everyone wouldn't stop harping about this woman's cooking. This was it then the answer to the question that had plagued her for some time. What else did Goku see in Shishi? This was it? Her impossibly magnificent cooking skills. Never before had Bula felt such overwhelming defeat. The feeling left a bitter taste in her mouth, and a heavy feeling in her heart. 
but she wouldn't allow Shishi to make her feel inadequate for long. Oh, no, not this princess. This princess was a super saiyan, and if there was anything her father had drilled into her during her training, and her mother had instilled in her during every other moment in her life, was to never give up, never allow your enemies to see how vulnerable you are, never just simply hand them over the winning hand, you must seize victory with hands and teeth if you need to. She glared silently at a smiling Shishi who was placing more generous scoops of mashed potatoes onto her husband's plate. A burning desire to defeat her rival formed. She would not simply roll over and allow Shishi to be the best cook in the whole world Bula would be the next best cook. Just you wait and see. She will learn to be so good at cooking that people would surely go into hysterics when they take a bite of her food. Her eyes shifted to the man of her dreams and the fire inside her chest burned brighter. A few days after that, Bula demands to be enrolled in a cooking school where students study to become the top chefs of the world. Bula is determined to be a great cook, one that perhaps someday could cook worthy meals for her beloved Goku. Why do you need to go to France to learn how to cook well Vegeta demanded, glowering at her as he slammed the pamphlets of the top-notch cooking schools she had handed to her parents. Your father's right, and why a school? Can't you just take some cooking lessons after school hours and still go to your current school? Bulma asked frowning a little. No, I want to learn how to be the best at cooking. I want to be able to cook for the people I love, and myself. Please mom and dad, it's not like I won't be seeing you guys anyway. I can circle the globe in two minutes tops if I wanted to so it's not like I will be living there and not see you guys in months, Bula explained, the determination never faltering. Bulma and Vegeta exchanged looks. Then Bulma sighed deeply. These schools are expensive. Even if we are literally the richest family in the whole world, I am not on board with enrolling you in an expensive cooking school only for you to drop out three months later, Bulma, said, sternly, money doesn't grow on trees, and I don't like it when I lose money for no good reason. Bula nodded and met her mother's piercing gaze without flinching, she squared her shoulders and stared ahead, blue eyes clashed with blue, I understand mother, I won't let you down, I won't drop out, I will see this through Bula exclaimed, Vegeta turned to Bulma and he nodded his consent. Bula squealed excitedly and rushed to her father's side, embracing him tightly in her delight. Brat, you better not disappoint your mother, Vegeta grumbled as he stared down at her head. I won't. Oh thank you dad. Thank you mom. You won't regret it, Bula cried out. After hugging her mother tightly, as well, she scampered out of their room in excitement, rushing off to apply to all of the schools she was interested in. Both her parents had wondered what had suddenly brought on this intense need to learn how to cook but they had let it slide. Bulma reasoned with Vegeta, that if their daughter was in one of her moods, then it was probably best to allow her to do what needs to be done. After all, it wasn't like she was asking them for money to do inappropriate stupid things like go out partying, or drinking, or drugs. Vegeta reluctantly agreed. He knew his daughter well, it was the same as when she was training with him or Trunks. The minute the princess had set her mind to something then it was best to encourage her to go for it. It always turned out beneficial for both parties. In a month, Arso Bula flew off to her first day in cooking school. She didn't use an air car, merely flew there herself taking only about five minutes to arrive. Thus, began her life in cooking school. Her first day in the school was enough to tell her that this would indeed be one of the most difficult hurdles she had to overcome in life. Cooking was regarded as an art form here, and nearly everyone who attended the prestigious institution had a great dream of excelling in the culinary world. They all had big dreams of opening up a restaurant or a patisserie that would win multiple Michelin stars, be regarded as the world's best cuisine and respected amongst all other great chefs. Bula quickly learned that her reason to be there was regarded as shallow and not nearly as ambitious. In the hellish heat of the kitchen, people were expected to have tall dreams of grandeur, and so her simple I just want to learn how to cook and be the best at it seemed out of place. Nevertheless, Bula didn't allow anyone to get in her way of learning the skills needed to make her an incredibly skilled cook. She would stay up late at night, perfecting a recipe, going over the preparations over and over again, trying her very best to make the food as delicious as she could possibly make it. She chased after seniors just so she could watch and learn from them their insane techniques and attention to detail. Her professors there grew fond of her burning passion to thrive, and her peers soon quickly realized what a formidable cook she could truly be. Always her true goal never wavered though, and that was to make Goku, the object of her love, acknowledge what a great cook she was. She would make him recognize her as the best, and not even she she could defeat. 
Bula held no illusions of becoming Goku's wife anymore now that she was already 13, and fast growing more mature and intelligent. She understood that the dreams she had of Goku falling madly in love with her were nothing more than a silly little girl's childhood dream, but she thought, sadly, if she couldn't win Goku's heart, then, at least she could, win his stomach. It was the only thing that made her life less filled with melancholy. Every time she returned home from school, Bula always cooked in her own kitchen to perfect her skill she would cook everything new that she had recently learned, and apply it as best to her ability as possible Capsule Corp. Still had their hired chefs, but Bula insisted on practicing at home to their main chef Monsieur Gaston had laughed when she fed him a pasta dish she made seafood olio olio, and proclaimed that, if that had been made, by her then he would have to quit his job, and hand over his chef attire to her Bula laughed too, but insisted he stayed, and if he didn't mind, to allow her to observe, and assist him whenever she, wanted a mutual agreement was settled, and so Bula would cook up some of her best dishes, and serve it to her family Bulma, and Vegeta, were both extremely pleased with her progress as a culinary student she was clearly, very determined to be a success, and Bulma was satisfied that placing her in the cooking school wasn't a waste of money the briefs family showered Bula with genuine compliments at every dish she made for them, and whilst, was grateful for their sweet words, no other words tasted so sweet and affected her so deeply as Goku's the older Saiyan would still visit her home occasionally to train and spar with her father or brother she would also sometimes get to train with him as well, but it was not quite as frequent as before she went to a demanding school Bula still remembered the day she made him roasted wild boar with stuffing and Chinese fried rice and served that to him she had hoped and prayed it was as good as Chichi's if not better it was the very first dish she made herself that she served to Goku. It's delicious, Bula. Goku beamed at her hand already handing out his empty bowl back to her for seconds. Really tasty, I love it. Bula couldn't help but beam back at him. A fluttering in her chest consumed her entire figure, and suddenly her palms were sweaty, and she felt a difficulty to breathe properly. You really think so Goku? She asked, excitement laced her voice. Is it the best you've ever had? Goku was already stuffing his face and with his second helping of fried rice, he heard her clearly though weef. Ishwatch Zhebish he tried to say, but with his mouth so full of food, Bula could barely make out what he was trying to say Goku chewed hurriedly, and swallowed his food he turned those dark, large eyes on her, and he smiles, gently, I was trying to say, it's not the best I've ever had but it's really, close, Goku said, smiling brightly at her Bula felt her heart sank a little, and she didn't know which hurt her more, his honest words, or the brightness of his smile maybe it was both, she loved all aspect of Goku including his childlike honesty, and sunny demeanor, but when said honesty was directed at her and mind, it's not completely positive well. Then it was a different story Bula still loved him, and perhaps loved him more for, she treasured his comments towards her even if they were a form of criticism, but this time, it hurt a little bit more than usual. Perhaps, because it actually was his way of saying yours is good Bula but Chichi's is the best Bula can't help that sense of jealousy creeping up inside her again, at the thought of the sun woman who was rightfully his wife her mind scolded her for daydreaming about Goku telling her she was the best at cooking but her heart, despite being a little bruised then, told her not to give up to stand firm, and continue to work on making this dish the very best, the greatest he had ever tasted in all his years. Bula didn't even realize she was frowning until Goku said it to her. Heh, sorry princess, Goku mumbled, scratching the back of his head anxiously, you asked me what I thought and that was my honest answer. I know sometimes people don't like to hear that. Your mom's told me many times I need to learn manners. Ha ha. Bula's frown deepened, but she shook her head. No Goku, she told him softly. Don't apologize. I value your thoughts greatly. I appreciate your compliments just as much as your criticism. Really? That's great then. Goku grinned at her. Bula's frown melted away at the sight of that smile, and her own cocky smirk spread about her face. She folded her hands across her chest rocking back on her heels slightly. Just you wait though old man, I'm gonna make you the best roasted wild boar, with stuffing and fried rice, you've ever had in your life, and I'll make you admit it too Bula exclaimed, confidently. Her blue eyes had that same determined fire lit within them, and it made Goku unable to resist returning her nearly arrogant smirk. I'll look forward to seeing you do that then he drawled out. I'll make you say oh the greatness of you you'll see haha, as I said, I'm looking forward to seeing you do that, it had been very similar to their playful bantering during sparring or training. Both stood and stared into each other's eyes, 
she's standing straight with her confidence, and youth brimming through her feet on the cold tiled floor of the kitchen. He's sitting down, legs slightly apart on the small kitchen stool, wild hair still jutting out in spikes everywhere. A small bead of sweat trickled down his temple, to his jaw and down that muscled neck. Bula watches a travel over slightly tanned skin with a fixation unlike anything she had experienced before. It was in moments like these that Goku stole her breath away, and left her mind muddled, and hazy, completely under his spell.